it's sad that we have to uh, go through what we've gone through this week in Texas. Uh, we're reminded of it almost every hour on television as they discuss it. And the families that have been hurt or the families that want to be protected obviously deserve that attention and we need to give it that attention. And I hope we can do that. Uh, yesterday at one of our hearings, I discussed my Eagle Act. I'm not going to go into detail about that, except just to say that it would give school officials and others training they need to recognize the sign of persons mobilizing to violence or intervention, either harm to themselves or harm to others. But I also would like to bring up another bill that I've been involved in that's been around the Congress for a few years, a bill I've worked with Senator Cruz and Tillis. Uh, we entitle that bill Protecting Communities and Preserving the Second Amendment Act. This bill would help block dangerous people from getting guns, from ensuring that agencies and institutions submit accurate records to the National Institute the criminal background check system. We know that as NICS here. Now, this isn't the, the only time. We've already passed some legislation, I think, led by Senator uh, uh, Cornyn in that area and maybe other members of this committee as well. Uh, but there's still more needs to be done with NICS. The bill would also create two new criminal offenses targeting what I've heard from my colleagues is a problem, straw purchases of firearms, and it would strengthen penalties for gun trafficking and other what we refer to as lying and buying offenses. Uh, these new penalties give law enforcement the tools they need to prosecute and punish individuals who commit uh, heinous crimes with uh, the uh, use of uh, getting guns that they aren't entitled to or without the proper check. I've invited my Democrat colleagues to talk with me about this bill in the past. Uh, I think even in the last 12 months I've had a chance to make that statement on the floor and I haven't gotten any response. This offer is still open. It will make a real difference in combating mass shootings. Uh, now to the agenda for today. Uh, I, I'm going to support Judge Childs. She said she doesn't believe in a living constitution. She's worked on administrative law at both the state and federal levels. And of course, that area of law, administrative law, is a unique a large part of the D.C. docket. Senator Graham has been a strong supporter of hers, and she's been a district court judge in his home state for more than a decade. Given her administrative law experience and Senator Graham's support, I think she has a, as good of a pick as we could expect for this very important D.C. circuit that we consider the second most important appeals court in our system of justice. I'll also say that I was more likely to support her after seeing how dishonest some liberal dark money groups were campaigning against her when she was a possible nominee to the Supreme Court. Nominees that I'll oppose, three or some uh, the most activist judicial nominees that we've seen. Uh, Nancy Abodu uh, decided to work for the Southern Poverty Law Center in 2019, despite years of broad public concern about the way the organization operates. At her hearing, she repeatedly refused to condemn that organization, that center labeling mainstream groups that it disagrees with as quote-unquote hate groups. She claimed that she had nothing to do with the center's defam defamatory hate group label, 
but she told the committee that she was responsible for overseeing special litigation, including against hate groups. She also claims to be overseeing all the organization's legal programmatic work. She even included in that LGBTQ rights issues. The center is involved in a case about state law regulating transgender medical treatment for children. The district courts of Alabama are looking into whether the center engaged in what's called judge shopping. I don't know of another nominee that we voted on when we knew a court was investigating possible misconduct. Conveniently, the nominee says she has no involvement in, quote, the filing of complaints, the briefings, or any oral arguments, end of quote. That's the entire case, so it's not clear what she means when she sees overseas cases. Ms. Chaudhry has made numerous statements critical of law enforcement. At her hearing, she told Senator Kennedy that she that she had said that police killings of unarmed black men, in her words, happen every day in America. When police groups strongly opposed her, then she had what we call a confirmation conversion. After her hearing, she claimed she never made that statement, but she never explained why she thought it sounded like something she'd say. I also wanted to briefly address Natasha Murrow's nomination. She claimed that voter ID and border wall are, quote, things that support or grounded in white supremacy, end of quote. And I thought it had something to do with the enforcement of the laws of uh, this land, nothing to do with whatever color of skin you have. And that's an outrageous claim against millions of Americans. And it just happens that voter ID is supported by 80% of the Americans. She also said that deploying federal law enforcement personnel to protect the federal courthouse in Portland in July 2020 was, quote, completely unprovoked and unnecessary. She wrote that ridiculous statement after rioters had been targeting the courthouse for two weeks. Rioters even threw balloons full of accelerant into the courthouse and tried to light it on fire with large commercial fireworks. They knew federal agents were in the building at the time. Now think of that. You're doing that to a federal building, threatening that life and it was something that was completely unprovoked and unnecessary in her words. With their activist records, I don't believe these nominees will respect the rule of law and follow the law as written. So I'm going to oppose them. I also want to comment on the bill on markup today, the Public Safety Officers Support Act. The mental health of our law enforcement officers and first responders is vital to their ability to continue to protect and serve. That is why I've introduced legislation focusing on this issue, like fighting PTSD Act, which advanced out of the committee last week to help law enforcement and first responders get help that they need for trauma that they experience on the job. However, I've heard from an important constituency of the public safety officers that the Public Safety Officers Support Act contains some provisions that concern them. So I'd like to continue working with the bill sponsors to see if we can get all public safety officers comfortable with the bill. I'm also concerned not only that this bill lacks a CBO score, but also that it may uh, price well into the billions. It seems to me we need to know what the cost is. We should know exactly what we're voting for. 
I'll vote to advance the bill today, but it appears there may still be some work that needs to be done in order to get it through the floor of the Senate. I yield. Thank you, Senator Grassley. Uh, I've been asked to accommodate one of my colleagues here, former 